what sort of stem we should use to get a good outcome with cementless technology. Okay. So the focus should be to achieve rigid primary fixation, but the second focus is on durable long-term fixation, depending on the uh, type and quality of surface treatment. There is a third focus, which is uh, choose the bearing, but we're not going to uh, concentrate on that today. So cementless stems are more variable in their results than uh, cemented total hip replacement, so the choice of design is pretty vital, and there are differences between the cemented and cementless stems, obviously. And there are some cementless stems that have generally performed better than the uh, cemented, and there are some that, and there are many that have performed worse. Stem design is for, in cementless. You need to neutralise the hip forces, and you need to have a stem that was uh, capable of dealing with different types of bone shape and quality. And the challenge to fixation are axial bending, but particularly rotation, out of plane rotational forces. Because, and this comes about because you've cut off the femoral neck. So you need a um, design philosophy. Uh, cement stems are more susceptible to torsional micromotion than cemented stems after you've cut off the femoral neck. So the fixation philosophies for cemented stems are essentially either neck preservation or neck sacrifice. And with neck fat sacrifice, there's fit and fill and there's lock. Let's look at them. Neck preservation. Each millimetre of neck uh, preserved reduces the magnitude of torsional forces. But the neck preserving stems, for one reason or another, haven't uh, gained great uh, application and haven't all been uh, so successful. So mostly they've gone by the wayside. Then there's the fit and, fix, uh, the fit and fill models. It's, you can have, uh, with the fit and fill, you can have uh, meta metaphyseal fit and fill or diaphyseal fit and fill. The problem for fit and fill, of course, is that the endosteal match needs to be within two millimetres for the proper fill and stability. And here's the problem. We've got lots of different femoral types. These are the three broad categories of femur types, but 45 different types of femur have been uh, described. And there's, so there's no uh, fit and fill implant that will cater for all of these in all cases. That's the problem. The SROM has a sort of combined proximal and distal fit and fill and does a very good job of it with the benefits of modularity and you can treat most femoral shapes and sizes with it. But uh, the disadvantage is that the stem position is dictated by the sleeve position. So if your sleeve position is not right, your stem's going to be wrong also, usually in varus. So a slight angulation of that leads to a great angulation of the stem. So then we come to the other mechanism for fixation of cementless stems, and that's the lock mechanism, where it locks within the diaphysis. So the, t the philosophy is it's a straight tapered stem in a curved femoral tube, and you get discrete contact points along the periosteum. We call it three-point fixation, but there's probably many more. There's no need for canal filling. And the two types of... Um, stems that we're familiar with that do this very well, this lock mechanism of the biplanar and the triplanar. The biplanar you're all very familiar with, the Karai stem and similars, been very successful. And the triplanar, like the CLS stem of uh, Spatorno, which has an expanded, um, uh, in the uh, proximal section, an expanded lateral uh, section. So the taper wedge is suitable for many more bone types than the fit and fill. Less bone is removed, uh, is much more intraoperative flexibility, and it's been shown to have fewer adverse bone changes. So the press, it's a press fit concept, that uh, the uh, nail in the wood concept, so it's a stem in a slightly elastic bone. So given that, given that bone is viscoelastic and the press fit doesn't last forever, you have to allow for some viscoelastic relaxation. The implant should be subsidence tolerant by virtue of its shape. So the flat taper will allow a little bit of subsidence and will restabilise. And that's important with these designs. But then you also need rotational fixation, and that's where the flat profile, the flat wedge, gives you good rotational fixation, whereas a round tube on some designs give you very poor rotational fixation. But primary fixation is enough. We need secondary fixation, so we need uh, rapid and durable ingrowth. So the original successful table stem was the Zweimuller, and still got better than 95% survivorship at 20 years. So biplanar wedges have been the most successful uh, recorded stems on record, the Zweimuller and subsequently the Karai. If you look at the results of the Karai uh, in the Norwegian registry, uh, you know, um, 15 years, 95% success. Uh, outstanding long-term results of the Karai, 95, 98, 90, you know, 
20 year anniversary results from the original Artro group and 1,402 patients, 96.4 survivorship after 18 years. So understanding the success of these successful stems, there is some commonality. They're morphologically friendly, metaphyseal, diaphyseal wedge profile. Uh, they've got a high rough index. They've got rotational stability. So, so they're subsequent, substance tolerant, rotational stability. And this is where most of the fixation occurs in this uh, transitional, transition waste of the uh, femur. And the stems are designed to uh, capitalise on that. The quality of surface treatment is very important, it needs to be rough, um, needs to be HA, it doesn't need to be all the way down, but it needs to be um, high quality surface treatment. So these fully coated stems like the Karai are even capable of working in difficult, capacious, osteoporotic type C type femurs. Uh, is a collar necessary? Probably not. Okay, so the radiological results, we get uh, normal bone pattern, no radiolucencies, no pedestals, no cortical hypertrophy, and no significant stress yielding except possibly up at the greater trochanter. So this is the Karai straight stem, grit blasted titanium, full HA coating. And even 80 year old females get bony ingrowth into this stem. And 83 year old females get bony ingrowth into this stem in retrieval studies. Wide clinical application works in osteoporotic bone, even works in infection infected cases. Stem survivorship in young people, uh, extremely high. The CLS triplanar wedge has also got uh, very good long-term results, uh, high 90% uh, over you know, 9 to 15 years. So the tapered wedge seems to be the best architecture for cemented as well as cemented stems, but they're different surface finishes. However, there's one problem that these stems do not address, and that's this osteolysis in the trochanter, uh, which allows entry of polyethylene particles, etc. It's due to stress shielding, and we've all seen these kind of pictures where the trochanter is going and even uh, fractures off, and in extreme cases, the trochanter even disappears. This is a 23-year-old stem. So this is due to the long-term adaptive changes in the total hip replacement. So how do we present this problem? Well, we have this is our solution. We, uh, and, uh, does, uh, based on the tension band uh, concept where um, FETO showed that the, the lateral side of the femur is not under tension, it's under compression, it's only this top of the uh, trochanter that's under, uh, that's under tension due to the actions of the iliotibial band. So these are compression trabeculae here, respond to compression, and these are tension trabeculae here, respond to tension. So. We designed an implant with uh, reverse cut grooves on the lateral side. Our chief designer is Dr. W. K. Chung. I dis uh, disclosed my interest in this, uh, in this stem. And the reverse cut grooves are designed to load the lateral uh, part of the bone of the trochanter and avoid the pro problem of um, trochanteric osteolysis. Uh, FEA studies support it. So, in summary, a modern cementless stem should have rigid and stable primary fixation. It should be a biplanar or triplanar wedge, should be subsequence tolerant, three-point fixation with good surface treatment. Thank you for your attention.